Welcome to Sturge Tropia. This is Sturge with what I hope will be the most comprehensive guide to fruit walking of all the videos made about the Entropia universe. And when I say fruit walking, I don't just mean picking up fruit. It's fruits, the stones, and the dung that appear randomly on the ground as you wander around the Entropia universe. We affectionately call that fruit walking here in the Entropia universe. And I want to show you how you can take something that has a little bit of value and turn that into a lot more value and make it even more profitable than just the, f the free amount of ped that it would give you if you were just to sell it on the auction house or trade terminal for that matter. Initially, really what I want to get after is the basics of fruit walking. So if you look where I'm standing, right now I'm standing in actually tall grass. So it seems and one of the things that you need to be able to do is to see the ground clearly in this grass and other objects on the ground, flowers and plants like the ones behind me and so forth. Those can obscure the items that appear on the ground, the fruit, the rocks, the dung. These things need to be removed. And to do that, you simply go hit escape, go into options, go into graphics, advanced and set the objects quality to low and you'll see the grass is gone. Now mind you, you do not have to do this to change the graphical settings to find fruits, rocks, dung on the ground, and the other things that appear on other planets, which we're gonna get to eventually. Uh, you don't have to set these graphic settings at this level, but it certainly does help. And you'll notice, I just did something. I actually went from having no HUD display to having a HUD display. And that's the second most important thing you should be doing if you really, really want to find the things on the ground is to be able to click on the, the icon that changes to no HUD display. And, and that icon here is this sort of looking like, like a door handle or a switch or something. Uh, the other thing you can do, uh, if you wish to have your HUD open all the time, is to move both your chat bar and your satellite navigation bar up a little bit off of the bottom of the screen and that way when you're walking anything that appears behind you which is more common than not for it for ground items will be visible for longer or at least you'll be it will catch your eye hopefully peripheral vision and then you will see it uh, with the HUD display on and then the third thing I always say to do and this is something I did for a long time and I'm actually at uh, Half Moon Cove is I just logged in, I started doing the video, and then I start fruit walking. And the reason that I say to do that is my luck has always been within the first five to ten minutes of playing, logging into the Entropy Universe, is to start fruit walking immediately. Well, there's no guarantee that you're going to find something within the first five to ten minutes. It has been my experience and the experience of other avatars I've discussed this with that you do usually find something fairly quickly if you start walking immediately and if you have a graphic setting low and your HUD display off. Now that we've talked about how to optimize seeing something that appears on the ground, let's talk about location and the various locations, lots of different types of locations. For example, I'm going to try to find a place on Amethera that has a very, very low population, meaning that people simply don't go to that area very much. And I think around uh, Megaton West Habitat is a good spot. I've been here before, uh, and I'm gonna go out on the islands a little bit. And I wanna show you not only methodologies in locations, but that location does make a difference on the size of the find you get on the ground. And of course, let me throw in one more little trick that I use if I'm having a, a difficult time finding items. In my previous excursions, I'll buy some weapon cells. I'll buy about a ped worth of weapon cells and maybe five ped in mining probes. I have no intention of dropping these things. I just am trying to make the algorithm think that I'm actually going to do something like hunting or mining. And it does seem to work. It has been my experience that if you just buy some of this stuff, uh, and then go out, you find a ground item pretty darn quickly, uh, even though even if it's dung, uh, that this is a, a good little trick to uh, maximize finding things. Sure enough, two minutes outside of 
leaving the service center, I find my first find of Bombardo. Now, this may be not quite far enough away from the, you know, the populated area, who knows? What I'm doing right now is I'm hunting around to see if there's another find in the area. It's something that I always do whenever I find a, a ground item. I, I like to run around and just do a little bit of scouting because you can find the double find. And I have heard, though never seen pictures, of the triple find. Let's see how many we get here from this and it should be probably typical no it's 84 that's pretty nice bombardo 84 so i am far enough away from where people travel normally and so the find is much larger much larger than the 20 average that you would find next up i want to talk about something what i call the quick turn so whenever i'm moving instead of gradually turning to go a different direction i do quick turns and you saw right there just as i did the quick turn this paplon popped up that is a very common thing. You'll enter a new area or you've been walking a long distance and then you quick turn and it appears behind you. The ground item appears behind you. And then, of course, I do the, the, the check in the area just to make sure there isn't a double find. But the quick turn method is doesn't always bear fruit, haha, <laughs> so to speak. But oftentimes when you quick turn, be looking behind you and you will see something pops up behind you. So it's a 15. It's not very big, but it, we got something. So I'm only maybe five minutes out from the service center now, and I pick up another Bombardo. That is an indication that the buying of the um, ammo and the, the mining probes is helping me just a little bit. It's not spectacular, but you know, I'm still getting ground finds. And those are going to add up as we go over. And of course, like I said, always check the area around any find that you get because there might be a second find. It may be rocks, you know, it might be dung, but you might as well do the check before you pick up the item and uh, and see what you get. So there's 83 Bombardo. So this is actually working pretty well. Let's keep heading towards the waypoint. Next, let me introduce what Bunker 3 calls the Sui Cookie Method. And that is to run along a cliff face, whether the cliff be sheer up or sheer down on your side, oftentimes you will find a ground item next to a cliff. I know it's kind of funny, uh, but it works. And I have tried it over and over, so there's a little bit of credit, I suppose, goes to Swee Cookie for this one. That one's only a 15, but that's okay. We're looking quite good. So far, four ground finds, and we're only about 10 minutes out from the service center. My whole goal here was to get to this island that is just off the shore of the Omegaton West Habitat teleporter, Ooh, and I got attacked by some Calypso cod. But I want to show you a different method here on a very, very flat area where you cycle up and back, uh, moving 10 meters apart from your first lane. This is called what I call affectionately the Zeke Saucer method, because Zeke is the first person to have detailed it such that I think many people can understand how you how you work this particular method. Really what you're going to do here is pick a lane. What you can actually see on the uh, on the sand that there are sort of a a grid like pattern. You're going to pick that and you're going to walk in one direction for a little while. Then you're going to quick turn, go 10 meters to the left or to the right, whichever you choose, and then go back the other direction that you just came. And that's because the coverage that you can see is five meters to your right and five meters to your left and behind you, front and behind. And that's the rendering capacity of the algorithm for the ground item. So here I am, I'm going to come up on this tree and then I'm going to take a left and I'm going to go 10 meters to, well, once I go around the tree, then I'm going to go to the left and then I'm going to go 10 meters and then I'm going to head back. So now on the left, I've got a little bit of overlap from where I just was, but I have full coverage on the right. And I've done a little bit of editing where I've cut out a lot of the up and back so far, but you can see I'm still in the same area. And one thing I do want to mention to be sure is that the ground items that you're looking for are not on the ground. It's only once the algorithm calculates uh, that it's there, then it's there. So there we go, a little bit of Nisset. As always, let's uh, take a quick look and see what this is, what size we have, and that's 55. So that's a really nice little find there. Uh, 
that's great. So this is the Zeke method, kind of up and back and up and back. But yes, to, to, to be clear, the ground item is calculated and then generated as you move. And so the Zeke method is that you're covering the same area, but you're giving the opportunity for the algorithm to calculate it over and over and over and over. And then, of course, I'm introducing the quick turn as I go, and then I am also have the ammo and the mining probes, which I'm just going to sell to the TT later anyway. And as you can see, I'm still out here covering the area as best I can. Quick turn, and there is the next find right there, a little brew kite. Right, uh, this helps to illustrate another particular point. Let's take a quick look and see how much brookite I get. 16, it's normal, it's pretty average. But I have, in my experience in fruit walking, so to speak, as we call this, I find more stones on sand. And this is what the sand looks like. And it doesn't have to be the sandy color. It can be red or it can be darker colored or it could be lighter colored for that matter. But if you have this pattern, for some reason, I seem to find more stones on sand. You still find fruits, not as much dung, but his stones seem to be the thing. And very important point is, I have never found rutol on any thing but sand. And rutol is the most valuable of all of the fruits, rocks, and dung uh, that you can find on the ground. And uh, maybe I'll come cover that a little bit later, but so far now you have a pretty good idea of the Zeke uh, saucer method, which is just the up and back and the combination of that with other things. The last location specific thing I want to talk about is server borders. And many of you have looked at the maps of Eudoria and Amethera, and I'm just using Calypso as an example. This works on all of the other planets that have server borders. Uh, doesn't matter if it's Next Island or Toulon or, you know, Rocktropia. If you have, if there is a server border, that is a good place to begin fruit walking. And for a lot of different reasons, mobs tend not to spawn right on the edge of server borders. So you're, you're relatively safe walking on server borders, but also there is a predominance of finding fruit, rocks, and dung when walking server borders. I don't know why that is. It also seems to work in land area borders. For example, Treasure Island. There are, Treasure Island is broken up into lots of different land areas. And if you walk the borders of those land areas, where you're crossing back and forth over those land area borders and getting the notification, you often find lots of fruits, rocks, and dung there. There is one particular problem. If you find a fruit uh, or a ground item, a fruit, a rock, a dung on a server border and you cross the server, when you return, that item will not be there anymore. It will despawn. So once you cross the server border, not the land area border, but the server border, the items that you have found on the other server, if you're coming back to check, they will be gone. And so within about a minute of landing and turning and heading up this border, I see, I pick up a little bit of dung here. And it's quite a bit, 128, I think that turned out to be which is really awesome. Uh, the, the, the dung itself doesn't sell as an item. You need to actually make it into something else, preferably uh, energized fertilizer, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, you should always pick up dung because it does have some value eventually. And lastly, you can find f ground items, the fruits, the rocks, the dung in water. Uh, I don't have any examples on video to show you. Uh, I have it confirmed from multiple sources that uh, you can't find it in water, but it's just, it's really super rare. So keep that in mind while you are swimming. If you're bouncing around on the ground itself in the water, you, you might have a chance of finding a ground item. Next up, let's talk about making energized fertilizer. The ratio is one growth molecule to one dung. You cannot buy the dung on the auction house, but you can buy growth molecules. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily. Be, there's no reason for paying that markup, even though the markup is very small. Each growth molecule is worth 47 peck. It's pretty easy to mine up. That's the reason it has very little value. You can see 100 to 101% markup. So you refine these two in your refiner, and this gives you one energized fertilizer. Let's take a look at that. So that's worth 47 peck. Actually, it's worth a little bit more than that, but because of that one uh, 
point zero 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 one for the fertilizer or for the dung itself. But this has a little bit of markup, hundred and two percent, hundred a little than more than hundred and two percent markup, and that's because it really isn't used by very well. It's only used by landowners, uh, land area owners, and you could see one hundred and seventeen point five pet sold today. That's only two hundred and fifty units of ener energized fertilizer cells. So. I recommend keeping a hold of all of your dung, converting it to energized fertilizer if you can afford to do that. If you can't, that's not a big deal. But I'd say hold on to the dung anyway. We don't know what's going to happen in the future with dung. But if you can, uh, you can afford to stockpile energized fertilizer, great, no problem, and then sell it in bulk. Let's see what we have for stuff on the auction house here for energized fertilizer. And see how many. I'm uh, just going to refine a little bit. Well, there are four available. And the lowest is 102.58. That'll probably sell in the next few days. So not a lot of people are selling it. But you've got to keep your price right around 102% to sell on the auction house. Next up, let's have a quick discussion about all the different stones that you can find on the ground. I didn't pick all of these up in the video, obviously. But it's good to see them all in display. Uh, there's Brukite, Nisit, Caldon, Soper, which I think are the most common. And then there's Truton and Rutol, and those are a lot more challenging to pick up and have much higher value than the others. Let's take a quick look at the markup for the first four. Brukite looks like it's coming right around, what, 35 to 37 thousand percent markup, but sells in the week um, and quite a bit actually, 37.7 packs. So that's quite a bit that has sold in the week. Nisset, uh, boy, fluctuates quite a bit. Not much has sold. Caldon, same. Pretty, pretty good sales. And then Soper, not a lot in the way of sales for those. So, you know, these are certainly sellable on the auction house per thousand. That's probably the better way to go, but they are coveted by crafters for their patterns and the textures that they can get from these particular stones. And of course, the most rare of the stones, which is Truton and Rutol. And you can see they actually do sell. We've got about 300 plus thousand percent markup with 293 million peck worth of Truton selling. So that's that's quite a bit, actually. And it's sold in the week. So that's good news. And then we've got Rutol with the, by far the highest markup, over 600,000 percent markup. And while not a lot of it sells, it's probably because it's really actually very challenging to find. Uh, I have a little myself, only 25 pieces, but, you know, that's, uh, this is the, the end-all, be-all of the ground finds in the stone category. So let's go to the auction here, and let's take a quick look at some of these on the auction house. So let's start with Brukite and see what Brukite comes in at. Now, the best way to look at this is the amounts. So it looks like about two ped per thousand for Brukite, and no one looks like they're selling the Brukite stone texture uh, at this time, just the blueprints. So a lot of crafters like to just craft it to get their skill up, because Brukite's so easy to find on the ground. Let's take another look here. Let's look at Nisset. More of the same. Some of the Nisset stone texture is available here, so let's check the markup. 200% Markup seems a little high for Nisset stone texture. I'm thinking it's probably more like around 125%. That would make more sense. Yes, right on 125%. But look, it's only selling in the month. So maybe not uh, not super valuable there. Now I just cut ahead a little bit to show you the most valuable ones. Most valuable stones. And that's Truton. And you can see somebody's willing to pay about a ped per hundred for Truton. Then Rutol, eh, about three ped for this this very very small batch. You can see it's it's in demand and uh, and people are bidding on it. So that's me. Yeah, I think that's good enough for the rundown of the stones. Well, I was going to go into long-winded detail about all the fruits and their value, but suffice to say, if you want to sell them on the auction house, they're about two to three ped per thousand if you're selling them at the auction house. But I have a better method for making even more money from your fruits that you find on the ground, and that's making Nutrio bars. You combine one fruit and one sweet stuff, and you get a Nutrio bar. 
and Nutria bars sell for 140% markup currently. Now, they've fluctuated over time, but people need them to, you know, feed to their pets. And when you got all the new varying pets that you can possibly have, even the robot pets eat Nutria bars. So keep in mind the better value, or what I call the Bunker 3 method, is to make Nutria bars. Now, it wouldn't be a Sturge Tropia video about profiting if I didn't throw in an Excel spreadsheet. Now, I know, but I tell you, this is really the best way to, d to show you exactly how well this plays out. So on the far left here, I have 11,500. That's probably all of the fruits that I have. And I could sell that 11,500 fruits for an average auction house sale value of about 20 ped, 19 to 20 ped. I lowballed it at 19. You could probably get 20 out with a little bit of savvy, but 19, I think, is what you'd net after paying all the auction house fees. Now, I only have 19.17 ped worth of sweet stuff, and this markup on sweet stuff is 113%, so I could sell that, and I could probably make about a ped 60 uh, from that, you know, from my 20 ped, a little over, uh, maybe almost two full, two full ped by just selling this edit stuff. But I can take those two things and combine them. Now, mind you, I can only make a maximum of 1,917 Nutrio bars because that's all the sweet stuff I have. And since it's a one-to-one -one combination, that's, that's my limiting factor here. But I want to show you Nutrio bars have 140% markup. And since I can only make 1,917 of them, that's 26 ped. That's almost 27 ped for 2,000 Nutrio bars, basically. So that's considerably more than the 20, 000, or the 20 ped that I could get from the 11,500 fruit. And all I have to do is use, of that 11,500, all I have to use is 1,917, and I'm getting 26 ped out of it. And that's 7 ped more than I would be getting if I just sold the sweet stuff by itself and selling the Nutrio bars and combining them. The only cost associated with this is the mining up of the sweet stuff, which it's possible to do that at a, at a quite a bit of profit, uh, TT value, and then finding the fruits. And then there's just your refiner decay that you have to pay, which is nominal if you buy a really nice refiner. So all I did here was one further calculation. If I could make all 11,500 of my fruits into Nutrio bars, assuming I had enough sweet stuff, the value of those would be 161 ped. And that's with the markup on the Nutria bars. So I can actually make 40, uh, basically an extra 46 ped over the base value of the sweet stuff at 113% markup, or even more so than the value of the 11,000, the 20 ped value of the 11,500 fruits. So you can see the better option here is to convert your fruits into Nutrio bars and sell them at a much higher markup. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. And to do that over time and sell them in small increments, as I'll show you here in just a second. Okay, here I am. Next day, logging in after I put up the Nutrio bars for sale, 959 each and both sold at 135% markup. So I, while I lowballed a little bit, that was actually the perfect deal. Right around a thousand Nutrio bars sells for 13, you know, 14 pet-ish. So that was a really quick turnaround. All I did was put it in, log out, next day I show up and I sold it for 135% markup. So that's a viable way to make a lot more ped from your fruits by just turning them into Nutrio bars. Let's switch gears a little bit. Let's go to the only planet in the Entropia universe, ooh, there's some dung, that has a mission for picking up the ground items. It's called Scouting Resources, and it's here on Next Island. And it is the only mission I know of that you can actually get a reward for simply picking up items on the ground. And really what you need to do is, once you come out of the main area where you land, called Paradise Landing, 
and you come down to the beach here, you talk to Chef Jamie, and she gives you the scouting resources. But you get a choice. Here's the thing. You get to pick one of these blueprints from her selection, and it's the chef's hat, the chef's apron, and the frying pan. And those blueprints have value. And you also get to keep all the fruits, rocks, and dung that you collect from that mission. How many of you will also remember that you can find broken Elysian technology here on the ground on Next Island that refines into the Elysian technology chip or the Elysian tech chip and that that sells on the auction house for greater than 3,000% markup. So essentially you're finding pet on the ground on Next Island, which you can't generally do uh, on, unless you're finding Ruto on other planets. The broken Elysian technology is such a wonderful thing and it has such high value. That's a really good reason to come to Next Island and do your fruit walking here. You get the blueprints from Jamie and you get the broken Elysian technology. That's free ped just for fruit walking. Now, some of you may remember from the Toulon files that you could find Nawa fragments on the ground on planet Toulon. That alone made it profitable just to do kind of the fruit walking on Toulon. Uh, with the equivalent of the Elys broken Elysian tech chip value, Nawa fragments were just pad on the ground. But the most valuable ground item in the Entropy universe turns out not to be Nawa fragments, broken Elysian technology, or Rutal. It's Mamnoon. It literally appears in large enough stacks on the ground that you basically pick it up, throw it in the TT, and you make pad. This particular instance, I found this Mamnoon here cruising along the beach here on Toulon, and I'd been told that you actually do find these kinds of things on the ground, but I was a bit surprised at the actual overall value of the Mamnoon that I picked up. That was 1.36 PED just sitting on the ground as a ground item. Later that same day, I found another Mamnoon spawn on the sand on a sandy beach on planet Toulon and I walked away just to make sure it would despawn and respawn so that I wasn't uh, being fooled for some strange reason and I picked 2.8 ped of Mamnoon up off the ground. You can literally just put that in the t trade terminal and get 2.8 PED out of it which makes Toulon the best place to do any kind of fruit walking at all. You pick up all the fruits, the rocks, the dung, Nawa fragments and as close as you can get to pet on the ground, <laughs> ma'am noon. So I made this video with the hopes of giving you all the tools that I have learned over the years, talking to other players, exploring myself, and that those tools would be useful for everyone to make more ped playing the game, picking up the items off the ground, and knowing what they look like, where to find them, and then what things you can turn them into, whether it be Nutrio bars or energized uh, fertilizer or simply just throwing Mam Noon in the trade terminal. And I thought I'd finish with this uh, double find here, uh, this double pick on Next Island. Kind of a cool thing. I'm sure there's information that I left out and that many of you have experienced over time, but be Please feel free to leave comments down in the comment section of observations that you have made, different techniques that you know work, and I will try to include those in the updated version of this video down the road. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button or dislike button if you didn't like this video, but hopefully you like this kind of content and it gives you the amount of information you need to play this game more effectively and to keep more ped on your ped card. Thanks for watching. This is Sturge signing off. Ciao for now.